Hello everyone and welcome to another interviews. We're in with my doctors make acid. Today we bring you etc. has played alongside Juno Reactor, Shane Gobi, Dino Cyrus, Time Lock and Domino. He's uh, been DJing since 2005 and he's been making tracks since 2007. Hello, etc. How are you doing today? Hi, everybody. Um, you alright? Yeah, doing great. Uh, it's great to be here. Good. Good. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Good. Uh, we've been friends for a while. Uh, we we met here. We actually been here for ten years. We both from Portugal. Uh, been living in the UK for ten years, uh, and we met here, which is quite a cool story. Small world. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> and we only live like. 60 miles apart. Yeah, 60 miles Maybe apart. Maybe not even that much. That's it. So it's, yeah, it's not that. I mean, the first time we met, we we, we made a party in Norwich, so you, you can yeah. set up a relationship just yeah. blossom. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, yeah. It's, it, it seems like we've known ourselves for years. That's right. It's just one of, one of them. Yeah. So I got a few questions for you, mate. Fantastic. So first of all, is what door do you use? What's your favorite door? My favorite though would be FL Studio, um, just because it, uh, that's the one I've started and I got most comfortable with, uh, familiar and I can just write my ideas down very, very quickly. Um, I have used uh, Studio One to move with yourself before, which yeah. I like as well. Uh, I'd say that that's the, my top two that I, I'd go for, uh, for producing is FL Studio and Studio One. Yeah, uh, good, good. Yeah, I mean, Studio One was uh, started as an amateur program, but it has evolved so so much that yeah. it's at the level of Cubase and uh, Pro Tools and any other right now. Isn't it? Yeah, and at, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's it's just a tool for us to make our art, isn't it? And uh, I mean, at the end of the day, they're all going to be the same. I mean, it's whatever works for you, really. Exactly. You know, so it's. I, I, FL Studio's got this bad reputation. Uh, it's not a pro. It, 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 you know, it's it's the painter that does the artwork, not exactly. you know, the actual pencil. You know, so That's... you can have a great pencil and then not have, you know, it's like a good drawing. <laughs> Guys, put that in your minds. That's 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 a reality. Yeah. If you got a good painter, he's gonna use any tint, any paint, and he's gonna paint, do a massive, beautiful painting. If he's a shit painter, ain't gonna do nothing with the best paints in the world. So that's put that in your minds. Don't don't say, oh, I don't have this scent, I don't have that, I don't have no. Come on, a computer is enough. Most definitely. So. Uh, so uh, when you, you when you make your tracks, uh, how do you start them? Uh, you start kicking bass and then percussion and most of the times, yeah. most of the times. But uh, it depends a lot, like uh, how I'm feeling at uh, at, the, at the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll start with an intro, just like I don't know, some you know. Sometimes I can go just for the sample. Oh, I listen to this. I'm going for my sample library, yeah. and then I hear this sound, and it, everything just clicks in, and I start. Because yeah. of that, and I started using that. As, you know, but it, it varies a lot. But mainly, the bass percussion start like a eight bar loop, and uh, just mm -hmm. go work my way through there, and just start complexing it, and then deconstruct and right. know, actually drag out the track. Right, cool, cool. So melody usually, what's what your tracks are driven by the bass or by melodies that are created? Mm, mainly by the bass. Mainly by the bass. bass. Melodies come after the bass. Mm, yes. Yeah. Uh, I love melodic basses. Uh, I, the thing that gets my my attention the most in a track is uh, all these bass percussion. 
progressions yeah and, and all these beautiful melodies just jumping up and down yeah. and you know that really gets me and that's normally why uh, what I go for and and then I'll make some leads to go with that right right so and um you know, we all have this problem. Uh, I mean, maybe new producers don't have the problem because they only started, but um, intermediate people and advanced producers, uh, they all come against this problem once in a lifetime. And they burn out, we burn out. We, we do so much in a track that we get to a point that we, we can't do no more and then we can't even do music, we can't even turn the computer on. And so, I, uh, I reckon that happens to you, right? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. All so, the time. So what what do you do like to prevent it and when it happens what do you do to deal with it? Um, it's it's hard to deal with it when it comes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very hard I, and it's I have to find you know some other things to do which is difficult because all I like doing is music. Uh, so you know uh, but to prevent that from happening uh, now I only work a few hours a day on a track unless I've got this brilliant idea and, and this feeling I need to write down straight away and it mm -hmm. takes me more than you know the you know normal time that I work on but um, just to prevent that I now work like you know a few hours a day on a track yeah. go back and forth and I never get sick of it um, keeping what, fresh yes yeah when it does happen though uh, fishing I go fishing yeah um, just take some walks that's another but, question there to ask yeah. is what other stuff do you do, what other uh, hobbies you have, so that's fantastic. Yeah. two questions yeah, in yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so the, yeah, it's just mainly fishing is like a real therapy for me because I love it and um, just watching films and, and their stuff, sometimes ideas click in from watching a film, you know, watching yeah, a movie true. and then, oh this sounds great on a track and then you go back to work, true. maybe not on the same track but you know, it puts you back to music. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just get their inspiration wherever it comes from. Yeah. Some people take months, some people take weeks. Uh, how long do you take to finish a track usually? If I'm doing it by myself, uh, it can take two, three weeks, uh, mm -hmm. depending uh, on how I'm feeling. Um, if, if I'm feeling really inspired and there's not too much interruption, <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, two days. Uh, if I'm working with somebody, um, like normally it's really, really quick. Uh, I've been doing some tracks with uh, Visual Noise. Right. Uh, we've, we've, we've knocked out like three tracks in, in, in a week. Exactly. Uh, it's, yes. It's, it's, really? it's, yes. It, it really depends, but uh, I'd say about a week to two weeks uh, average. You know, uh, just so, yeah. I've been not really, like, I'll, I'll, if I'm too long listening to the same thing when I'm working, I get, every time I listen to it, I find a mistake. And right. then you fix that mistake, you listen to it again, and there's another mistake. Yeah. And basically, it's just like as if you're stuck on the mud. The wheels <laughs> keep spinning, but you're in the same place, you know? Yeah. So to, just, to, to avoid that, I, I do that, you know, uh, just like previous, previous question, work a little bit every day. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Try not to do too much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing, um, we're doing all to finish. Yeah, do you. For example, on those uh, sessions that you in two days you make a track, like those sessions, do you, is that it, or do you go back to it to remix it, mix it, like when your ears are fresh? And... Yes, always. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah always have a second, third, fourth listen to it exactly, a yeah. couple days later, and there's always something to fix. Yeah, exactly. there's always something to fix. Good, good, good. Uh, when you do VS, VS tracks, how do you guys usually work? Uh... Um, it varies once again because uh, some people at the VSs with work on different doors, mm -hmm. so we have to work on uh, audio bases, just you know rendering and swapping mm -hmm. uh, like samples if you like round. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll do a structure and then send it over as a WAV file broken down, so then you can do something with it and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, if it's on the same door, then it's not really pretty easy because I mean, we just swap, like I'll do project my files. bit, that's right, and then I'll just send the project file to him, do your bit, and then, you know, we'll both see if it's, oh, oh, the music, oh this is good, Yeah. it's done, let's get it up there. Cool, cool. 
We've been through sources of inspiration. Uh, yeah. Do you want to add something to that, uh, aside from movies, um, and relaxing? Traveling. Traveling. Yeah, when it tra like, if I go some gigs, Yes. Yeah. Uh, that gig we went to Portugal, that was long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was inspirational. Uh, I mean, just whatever you enjoy doing normally gives you inspiration. Exactly. Uh, I enjoy traveling, fishing, watching movies, uh, listening to music, mm -hmm. and all that gives me inspiration. Um, yeah, like, you know, samples, like I said, or sounds, or new synth, normally for me, new synth means a new track. It's, uh, oh, this, yeah. it's like, <laughs> new toy. Oh, this is great, yeah, new toy. Yeah, let's so explore let's, it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, my inspiration comes from that. Uh, other artists as well, like, uh, and they, uh, once again, that falls on the music. You're listening to you know somebody else's track or, or yeah. a song, and, and you think, oh, okay, oh, I'm gonna do something. That just give me an idea, you know? Yeah, yeah. And and, and that works normally. You know, for, 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 for. Talking about melodies um, and chords and all that stuff. How do you usually go about that? Do you like write them on the piano roll most of the time, or you most of the time try to play everything? Try to play everything. Mm -hmm. um, most of my tracks, I'll, I'll hit record and just let it play, like just let it nearly to the end of the track, and just play whatever comes to my mind. Yes. And normally that's what stays, and I'll do that for different leads, different scenes. Steps. I'll, 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 I'll use my, I'll play them in, but uh, sometimes do write them in. But uh, mainly I'll play, mainly I'll play, yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah, okay. And do you, you want to talk about what you think is the difference between one and the other for you? I think, I think if you play it, yeah, it, it turns out to be more organic or it, it's, it sound. I mean, of, of course, it sounds like because you're playing it. it sounds like some some. It sounds human, more yes. human, you know. Yeah. More it natural. Exactly, it's natural. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, more natural. More so yeah, guys, learn how to play an instrument. <laughs> if you just write things down, it sounds like a machine. Yeah. All right, it's too mechanical. What's your favorite synths uh, in general? Uh, for most, like the one I use the most and my favorite is a silent one. Silent! So, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, like Massive uh, Gladiator 2, mm -hmm. we use it a lot too. Uh, Electrax. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes Vanguard. Vanguard. Sometimes. Uh, don't use it that much, but uh, it, it, it's, it's good for like stabby sounds and stuff yes. like that. Uh, that's what I use it for the most. Um, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, Nexus. Nexus. I use that too, sometimes. What, for more mainly um, for pads? Or? Yeah, mainly for uh, arps, actually. Arps? Yeah. Arps. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it, it, it's a bit limited, but, um, but it sounds great. You can get it to sound great. Uh, so I use it mainly for that. Do you, do you use like little bits of its reverbs or? Um, normally, yeah, to change to change around, um, uh, like on uh, reverbs, filters, uh, change the modulations on it sometimes. Okay. Uh, whatever comes to mind, I just normally just go in there, fuck around with it. Oh, it sounds good. Done. And for, yeah. for bass, what do you use for? What, which synth do you use for bass? Silent. Silent. Silent one. Used to use uh, Alien 303, but. Right. Uh, I used that for a long time, uh, but uh, you know, you gotta move on for better things. And uh, mm -hmm. Silent One, I like it. Uh, I've used Trillion before, and it's good, but uh, I like Silent better. You know? right. <laughs> I can get cleaner stuff with uh, Silent than with Trillion. Yeah. Trillion always is, is it's got more warmth uh, by itself, but it's not as clean as Silent. I agree. Yeah, it's very, very, very clean. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah. You get that. Uh, Get that bass that uh, it, it, it seems like the, the speaker is actually blowing it out like wind, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. rather than just it's great. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you feel it more than you, you feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you so. can feel it. Kick and bass. What kind of treatment do you do for the kick, for the bass, and 
like everybody, I, you, I, I'm assuming you do like everybody putting the kick and the bass in the same group channel. Yeah. And what do you do to that group channel as well, roughly? For, for the kick uh, and bass, mm. kick I use very little, very, very little. Uh, I use as, as, as less as possible. Uh, I, I do, do it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a little compression, tiny, tiny bit of compression. Uh, so, sorry to interrupt, but do you get do you use samples or do you, you use samples? Yes, use yeah, you use samples. Yeah, uh, if you find that if you like, just mm -hmm. you know, use it. Why not? You know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's sure. there. It's clean. Um, no processing. You know, it's just gets you into it going quick. Mm -hmm. The bass. Uh, I EQ it and then use a, a compressor as well just to make sure it's you know, on the same level you can hear what you want. Mm -hmm. And then that's all channeled through to, it's routed through to another channel where I cut, uh, you know, uh, from 30 hertz to uh, 17,000 uh, or, or 17 hertz. Yeah. Seven, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that all gets cut in there, and normally that just brings it up a little, yeah. you know. Um, sometimes I do take a little of the high end of the bass, um, just just you know when the other all the other elements come in, mm -hmm. and, you know it just gives it a little bit more warmth. Uh, yeah, I use very very little on, on the bass. Uh, just you know, try and keep it as clean as possible. That's exactly. what I try to do. Do you side chain? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't use sidechain compression or uh, a compressor on, on FL Studio because what I use is a big, big controller basically. Yeah. And it's basically, it acts like a sidechain compressor, but uh, just real quick and easy for me to do that way uh, and save my CPU. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. uh, just, I just control the, the bass channel with a big controller on the kick uh, and then you can just adjust it and it's, it works great. Yeah. Lovely. So that's it. That's it, you guys. You, there's people using like massive chains of effects for your bass and your kick, and it ends up terribly, sounding terrible, you know. And most most producers I've been talking to, and including myself, we don't use almost nothing. Uh, the cleaner, the better, as it comes out the, uh, from the machine. So you gotta focus on your synthesis, guys. Just focus on your synthesis. Got a clean bass from the machine, you don't need to do much more to it. And of course, use a good synthesizer. Don't use a uh, synthesizer that's gonna take like a massive chain of effects to make the, the, the bass sound better because that's just, uh, uh, it's not just a headache, it's boring, you know? So you need to do one. I don't wanna say that. <laughs> nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs>
just go through sounds uh, I think that will work. Mm -hmm. Just throw them in. And after I'm done with my selecting, I'll go back and then I'll play them in every, I'll just play that in a loop. Just, 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 just throw it in there. And right. if, it sound, if it sound, doesn't sound good, move right across until it does. Basically, that's what I do. I just plug, just type it in, basically. Just put it in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, have it playing uh, while you put it in, you know, while you're playing it in. Um, sometimes I use the MIDI uh, to, to, to play them in. Sometimes right. I actually write them in. Uh, I find the percussion, uh, like just tapping it in, is easier because you, you think of it, you, you just do it. Right. Uh, when, as if you're going to write it, sometimes it takes you a little bit to figure out where you have to put it right. to, to listen to what you thought, and the idea goes sometimes. True, true, true. You know? So it's faster. Uh, it's faster playing it in. Uh, the snares, you know, uh, I'll, I normally know where the snares are, mm -hmm. so I'll just write them in. But then all the other bits of percussion, um, like uh, cowbells, uh, Fingers, whatever. Mm -hmm. whatever, whatever sounds good, really. Uh, just put them all in there, and then there's the equalizing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to make them all sound good together. <laughs> uh, talking about equalizing, where where do you start uh, like leveling and uh, EQ EQing? Uh, for, for leveling, for, for, for the volume itself, I normally just turn everything down, and then have kick, snare, playing, mm -hmm. bass. Or, I just have one sound playing, normally the kick, I start with the kick. We're thinking about the whole track. Mm -hmm. Just have the kick playing at the you know normal that level that you want. Yeah. And then just close your eyes and I just close my eyes and then just raise the, the bass till it sounds good. I'm not actually bothering, oh this is level, this is not, you know, just visually. Mm -hmm. I just close my eyes and listen to it and then I'll bring them up until it sounds good. Uh, and then do, you know, the same for every every channel really. Just I just turn it down and bring it up, my eyes closed, so right. it sounds good. Then, you know, normally it gets right first time, then the for volumes normally get it right first time because you do everyone, mm -hmm. your eyes closed, only thing that you can is here. Right, okay. Uh, in per still in percussion, um, do you use like um, any reverb on your percussion? Like, I mean, I mean, sound effects. Um, slight, slight reverb, it's a right. very, very small reverb. Um, some compression, mm -hmm. definitely. Parallel compression uh, or normal compression on the bus? Just normal compression, yeah. On the, the bus so or on the actual, bus. On the actual, like, uh, um, the group the, channel. The group channel, yeah. yeah. I just use that in there. Um, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, you know, once before, coming back to the same point, I like to keep it as clean as yeah. possible. That's, that's, uh, is it multi-band compression or single-band compression? Just, uh, just single. Single-band, single okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, don't you use distortion and just compression? Um, no, I've never used distortion for percussion, but uh, an idea. <laughs> yeah, no, try, try single band yeah. distortion with Saturn, for example. Yeah, for, for that's definitely an idea. That's good. Background. So we all know background is very important, guys. Uh, there's a lot of people sending me tracks uh, asking oh, what's missing, uh, why it doesn't have the, the impact that uh, I should have, why it's not sounding pro, what, what's wrong. And most of the time it's the background that's missing. And uh, I mean, music without background is like watching a movie without music, right? It's freaking boring, right? So background is very important. And every different producer has a different way to create background sounds. Um, and that's what I want to ask you. Uh, how do you go about your backgrounds? Um, there's there's two, two ways I normally do it. Uh, I use a lot of impact sounds, so like uh, you know, cut cut down kicks with lots of reverb, mm -hmm. like cut the low end on it. I use all that a lot. And then uh, I normally I just load up a synth and have it recording as I go through sounds. Mm -hmm. Just shit loads of reverb. Uh, most of the time, uh, and that's, that's mainly the way I do. Just uh, go through scenes I like, tweak them around a little bit, and then just play little stabs or, right. you know, with loads of reverb, just normally creates that um, big sound effect, you know? 
It's a good idea. I mean, you can get pretty much uh, a lot of stuff going really fast, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Good. good. Because uh, you got what you end up is with with this big file of backgrounds that you can just exactly. cut up and use. Exactly. You know, just how I'm playing the track, the root keys and E, so just play E. Exactly, you know, exactly. Yeah. You, never, you never go wrong with that. No, you, you get all the sound, different sounds, and then you just you just pick. Oh, I like this, I don't like this, exactly. I like that, I like that. And mainly just do it that way. But do use a lot of uh, impact, like uh, if I have a kick, get the low end, big reverb on it, like fuck, and then just have that sometime. You know, most of the time I have that. Cool, 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 cool. That's that's uh, that's what I do with percussion uh, loops. <laughs> I do I work a little bit similar to that. Favorite EQ? Ha. Pop filters, pro Q. Yeah, okay, yeah. Awesome. Filters. awesome. Pop filters, pro Q too. I want to get yes. my hands on it. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's now. I think it's out by now, and I'm not yeah. sure. Uh, I, I got to try the demo for I want to try the demo first. Um, anyway, compressor, what's the one that you use the most? Compressor, uh, let's see, I can probably use C6, I think, from Waves. Wait, C6? Um, think that's it's multiband. Ah, uh, that's, that's the one, yeah, that's the one I use the most. Uh, yeah, multiband. It's from Waves, from Wave... Uh, yeah, Waves uh, 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waves 9. Yeah, Okay. And for reverb, I use the uh, R-verb, it's huge. R-verb, what's that from? Uh, waves. waves as yeah. well, yeah, R-verb. I haven't, I haven't yeah. tried that one. Yeah, it's good. I think I've heard about it, but I haven't tried it. Ah, right, cool. Right. I didn't have reverb in my list. <laughs> I didn't get any answer to that. There you go. Right, uh, so delay, delay, yeah. Don't use much delay. Yeah, uh, no. when I do... Uh, I normally use the uh, native FL Studio one. Okay. It's just normally easier to get, to work with, but I don't actually use a machine to do the delay. What I'll do sometimes is chop a little bit of, like say, the end of the bar, I want it to be delayed. I'll chop that little bit, copy it, and then have automation on the volume. It's just, I got used to working saving CPU, so, mm -hmm. so it you, just works for me. So you you create, the time, yeah. Manually create the delay yourself. Delay, yes. Exactly. Yeah. So it's an illusion. It's not a delay, but it's. It, it, it sounds sound, like, sounds delay, like a delay, exactly. but it's not. Yeah. Good. Uh, phaser and flanger, do you use them a lot? Uh, like... I don't think I ever use a flanger or a phaser on my track. Right. So only on the synths maybe? Uh, yes, yeah. yeah, one or two synths maybe, but I'm not a big fan of flanger mm -hmm. or, or, or phaser, I, I do like mm -hmm. um, on leads mm -hmm. sometimes, uh, but don't use them a lot, right, okay. very, very little. All right. All right, so uh, I just want to go back to the compressor because you talked about the multiband compression. Um, I think that's the one, yeah. C6 is multiband. Oh, yeah, C6 is C1. Oh, is it C1? It's C1. single, single band. C1. Yeah, yeah, so it's C1. C1. C1, C1. C1 okay. C1. <laughs> five steps ahead. Yeah, yeah. C1. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, one is similar to C. It's like, you know, the word. <laughs> that's just joke. <laughs> no, no. Have you tried C1. the Arc, Arc uh, Renaissance compressor? Arc compressor? No. Uh, try our compressor. Yeah, yeah. Um, C1 and our compressor, they're a bit different. Our compressor is more sharp and it's better for side chaining. Yeah, try our compressor for side chaining, it's, it's, mm. it's better than still. Mm. Going now for live act, getting into the live act wrong. So, what equipment do you take? Laptop, mm -hmm. top card. MIDI keyboard, that's it. Uh, that's it, yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. Sound card, may I ask, uh, what, what sound card do you have? That's, my sound card is uh, it's actually quite shitty. It's a uh, M-Audio Fast Track Pro. Fast Track Pro, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, I, I want to change, yeah, get a focus right. Uh, All right. Similar sort of thing, but a little bit better. But, but it's been working, I mean, it hasn't been letting me now, but, so. Okay. Until last night. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was a weird problem yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, uh, that's the sound card I use. Mm -hmm. My keyboard is actually fucked now. I used to use right. uh, uh, Alexis X uh, X Photon Twenty Five. Photon Twenty Five. Yeah. 
that was great fun, but it broke. Right. Yeah, it's eight years old, so. Okay, so. Time to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Time to go. We need to get a different one. Mm -hmm. But mainly, keyboard, soundcard, laptop, big mm -hmm. uh, 17 inch motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So I can see what I'm doing. So uh, see properly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, sound cards, uh, some of you guys think that it's, it makes a big difference to buy a 400 pound sound card from a 100 pound sound card. The difference is not that big. The difference usually is on the preamps and um, the kilohertz uh, quality. I mean, if, if you're planning to record a lot of instruments, you need good preamps uh, and high uh, kilohertz uh, recording, right? So there you, you, you're looking to spend some good money. But if, if you just want to do some live acts, you just want to use it so that sound gets processed through it, you don't need a very expensive one. Right. Not that way. Uh, I, I, I made that mistake. I had a Moe 2 Pre-8, it cost me 400 pounds, and after, the, the, the warranty was uh, over like two years, in two years, and two years and a half it broke down. Like, there goes 400 pounds. Oh, and what for? I didn't need it. Yeah, it's managed, well, like you said, manage it, it's just to let it out. Exactly. Process the difference the, the, is, uh, like you said, sound. you know, it's in, in the intake of this sound. Yeah, the preamps. Yeah. So, uh, what method do you use? Uh, how, how, how do you set up your live act and what kind of stuff do you do when you're actually playing live? Uh, to interact with the, with the music being played? Right. Uh, so, most active. Uh, on controlling the quality that's coming out, uh, so mixing, mixing live, live mixing. and playing the instrument live as well, mm -hmm. using a uh, you know, keyboard. Um, in the future, though, what I would like to do is uh, um, set it up on different, even the tiniest bass patterns or whatever leads, mm -hmm. separate into tiny, tiny segments, mm -hmm. so that I can do remix live. You know, I use change the structure. Change the structure of the track. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just basically, what's going to end up is uh, every live you're going to hear a different version of that track. A different structure of the track, exactly. Always. You know, it's, it's never going to be doing the same. You know, um, exactly. So. Which uh, is something that in Cytrus I don't think of ever heard before, uh, unless it's like a band, uh, like those uh, more band type of uh, side trance, uh, like some project, and they yes. do that a lot, yeah. but it's a band like, you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah. so not, not many people do that and it's really adventurous to try something like that, so I wish you luck with that. Yeah, but yeah, I wish, you luck I wish myself luck too, because yeah. uh, uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be really heavy on, on, on whatever equipment you got, like yes. you need to have a good laptop. Uh, memory, a lot of memory. Yeah, a lot of memory. Big, nice processor. Mm -hmm. Fast. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's going to be great fun though. Yeah, the, I mean, the, one of the best things to, to use for that kind of stuff is would be Ableton Live. Um, yeah. Uh, I had a little problem with it, but uh, I need an upgrade anyway. So when I have more memory on my computer, I'll try that again. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that's, that's that may have been your problem. Um, yeah, not enough memory. It, it just takes it takes quite a toll because yeah. you're accessing a lot of files mm -hmm. at the same time, basically. So. Yeah, it's, I think that. 256 at one point. Yeah. <laughs> so it was but, uh, quite a lot. <laughs> come on, bring on the machines and let us have our fun, huh? Yeah. <laughs> true, true, true. So one thing that uh, bothers uh, some of us, uh, even even people on an advanced stage, uh, is stage fright. That's right, stage stage fright. Do you suffer from this disease? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no it's, it's you know what man it's it's horrible like it's, even a couple hours a couple days before the gig i'm already starting to feel a little little nervous about it uh and then right before you know the actual playing time uh i get really anxious oh, i want to get up there <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, but get it done yes yeah but it's it's yeah, yeah it's nerve wracking actually. Um, 
but it's great fun. I still do it anyways, you know, because you love it so much. But uh, I get it all the time. Doesn't matter if it's 20 people or a big, big party, I still get it. In order to, to bring yourself back down to earth and deal with it, uh, what, goes, what goes over in, in your mind? I mean, what do you think to yourself? What do you try to say to yourself to calm yourself down? Uh, for one, I won't listen to anyone else's tracks before the gig. So I don't start criticizing my own mm. and feel, you know, bring my confidence down. Right. That's my first uh, thing to do. And then the second is uh, I just concentrate, uh, I just focus on on the fun I'm gonna have when I'm actually already up there. And th the thing that makes me a bit more nervous, uh, it's the actual coming in setting up. Mm. That's that, that's the part that gets me the most. It's just like ah, uh, the most dangerous part. Yes, it's just like shit. Something goes wrong. Yeah, body stops. Yeah, you know. So it's that's that's the thing that that makes me most nervous uh, and obviously you know if you're playing with big names there's always that pressure yeah. 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 so uh, anybody doing parties out there get a good sound engineer please yes please. Be because we've been we've been doing working in parties that is just terrible guys I mean yeah. uh, there's no sound engineer to start off and uh, whoever's responsible is not doing a very good job and that's why there's so many problems with the system sometimes, you know, so get a good yeah, sound engineer. Definitely. Please. Um, and, and, and up for the Awareness Festival engineer, that, that was, was a, a yeah, great time. That was a good, yeah, he's a good. professional. Just, just do like him, just yeah. have your, your cables ready for the yeah. artist to connect. Exactly. And then that way you don't have to fuck around with the mixer or exactly. with this or that. It's ready to go, just plug it in, done. That's how it should be everywhere. Yeah, right? it's, it's so it should be done. Right, so how do you go about your live acts? I mean, let's say I'm um, uh, I'm doing a party and I, I'm calling you, look, uh, come and do this live act. Is, uh, the party is uh, it's open air in the, in the middle of the, in the bush. It's a bush party. And how do you go by that? Do you like um, just, you got something set for this type of party and that type of party? Or, or do you, okay, uh, now I'm gonna make a, some uh, some tracks to go in that environment to go with that party. So have you got things ready, or or a mix of both? It's a mix of both. Yeah, right. I'll, I have things ready that I know work anywhere, mm -hmm. and then um you know the, the time I'm playing drives it the most. Mm -hmm. If I'm playing at night, mm -hmm. normally uh, normally I'll, I'll wait, you know, and, and try and see what time I'm playing before I get it ready and set up. Uh, you know, for that night, um, because you, you don't want too much contrast be between you and the guy playing before you, uh, nor do you want to give too much contrast difference for the guy playing next to you, because you don't know, you know, you don't want to make him look like an idiot. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Exactly. So um, yeah, uh, but I, I, part of it is ready, and then just build, you know, just just do it as requested <laughs> so mainly the structure uh, which uh, uh, the structure of the actual uh, set mm -hmm. would, would be done after you know, it's been requested and where it is what time i'm playing that will define it the most um you know some places will like more melodic uh journey stuff but uh, whereas some other places will like loops <laughs> yeah and uh you know more of this stuff mm -hmm. um but yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, there's all these tracks that I know that will go on there, uh, but about 50% of it, uh, I'll, I'll make tracks for that party. Right, right. Okay. So just one last question, uh, mastering. Do you do your own mastering or do you send it to somebody else? Oh, or, no, no. How do you go about I'll that? I'll that for the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, mastering, the mastering guy, uh, I, Martin John Ghost, for the guy talent partner, he does my mm -hmm. mastering. Okay. Uh, he's done mastering for one of my tracks as well. Yeah. Uh, that was good too. Uh, but yeah, I keep away from mastering. Yeah, okay. It's enough already composing, mixing, and then producing it. 
and yeah. when you actually go to mastering. And I've heard uh, that you're now managing a solid partner as well with, yeah, with yeah, Martin, yeah. right? So yeah, so it's it's it takes a toll, and then mm. it's great fun, but I'll let him do the mastering. <laughs> yeah, you can only do so much. Okay, you can only do so much. Each one does his job, you know. Yeah. yeah. Works best like uh, it's like just like in a movie. You get the director, you get the producer, you exactly. get the you know the, the screenplay guy and all that. So uh, you know each one does his job. Mm -hmm. Okay, mate. I think that's that's it. I'm I'm out of questions. I've run out of questions. I can't I can't do no more. You you done you done a pretty good job answering all of them. I was like I was trying to trick it's you, good, good, man. but it's good. Uh, I, I I wasn't it's good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. So. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. Thank uh, you for inviting me. It's great, great fun. Good, good stuff. Okay. So that's etc. for you guys. Listen to his music, check out his SoundCloud, check out his Facebook, check out Silent Partner Records, where he is, and where you can find other fresh artists. And have fun. I'll Does see you on the next one. Peace. <laughs> uh, right, so there's somebody blocking the road. I think he's trying to dance the Michael Jackson dance. Thanks, buddy. Fuck hell. <laughs> yeah, that's London for you. That one sounds a bit too much. Yeah. That's too many ice creams we mean, kids, right? Yeah. Hello and welcome to another vlog. Today we are here in London. And we're coming from a party. I'm here with etc. Look, there he is. Uh, is that Victoria? Today's vlog is about sushi. The way you do sushi, I am going to teach you. First you catch the fish. Then you kill the fish, then you eat the fish, that's sushi, 101. Or you just find the bird and take the penny off. <laughs> but that's also fish, <laughs> sushi. Sushi! Yeah. <laughs> Expired it, gone. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs>